the same thing that we talked about in combinational components. Components based design is required because you are getting more complex design, so you cannot always go to the gate level and try to design at the gate level. So we are coming to the RT level, register transfer level. And now we are in that level with sequential components. We talked about the memory elements before, which they were sequential design because they had some kind of states of memory. The output of these circuits uh, was not only determined by the inputs. Inputs plus some kind of a state of the circuit will determine the output. We talked about SR latch, then D latch, then master slave, then D flip flop, JK flip flop, T flip flop, and at the last one, edge triggered D flip flop, which would be maybe the base component of our sequential circuits. And we t actually talked about counters at that time, which I will do fast review of the counter again here. So we talk about sequential components, then we go for counters, very fast review of that because we have already covered synchronous counter, asynchronous counter, and then we talk about up counter, then registers and shift registers. So we are done with this component. So, okay, if you remember at the beginning of the component-based design, I showed you this. I am telling you that there are different elements in one design. So this part, for example, registers, bus, we have bus, we have combinational parts, we have registers, sequential parts. This is some kind of a uh, view of a processor. It has ALU, it has program counter. Uh, you, 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 are, you are not going to design a processor, but these are the elements of a processor. A program counter which shows the instruction that should be fetched from the memory and so on. I don't go through the detail of the processor. It is another course, but it is the, the block diagram of a design, but what we were covering was combinational part before. We talked about combinational part. Now we are going to sequential parts, which are, for example, registers. They have a clock. They have something as input. And then they we, ha we have output. And the output is not only dependent on the inputs only. Inputs and the previous state of the circuit. And uh, we talked that there is a data pass and there is a controller which controls, for example, we talked about a universal adder subtractor. We have a controller to say, okay, now you have to add or now you have to subtract. Now you have to do this and do that. So we have controllers. Controllers, they usually have some kind of timing when what happens. So they are based on different states of the machine. So we have sequential circuit, sequential part, part. With the sequential part, we have controller based on the state of the machine generates the control signal. For example, ALU start, or for example, PC start, program counter start, and so on. So we have a controller and data pass. We have talked about data pass before, this is data pass. Now we are going to talk about controller. Uh, the con not not the, the complete design of controller, which is for another course. I told you last time, for about finite state machines, milli and more machines implementation, it is the next course. Uh, I guess ITI 1200, if I am not mistaken. In ITA 1200, you will see those things. Uh, but now we stop at this stage, which we just show you the RTL sequential components. Uh, just to bring uh, a review from memory elements, I just bring you T and D flip-flop. 
If you remember, T flip flop was a toggle flip flop. It works with clock. In every clock signal, if the T is one, then the output toggles. If it is not one, it is zero, then the output remains as it was before. Okay? So uh, this is the equation for T flip flop. This was the symbol. So we have a clock. So clock is controlling the input. So you s I put C1 and 1T. C1 means C is controlling, is controlling. 1T means T is controlled by C. In every clock cycle, and here, what is the edge? It is falling edge because it has triangle it means it is edge and it has a circle so it means falling edge uh, clock in every falling edge of the clock if the in the t input is one then the q inverts toggles one becomes zero zero becomes one and we had also D flip flop, which is the base component of a register. We can store it in here whatever we put as the input. By coming a clock, a clock, it stores here and appears at the output. Until the next clock cycle and the next D, this doesn't change. So as long as we don't have clock cycles, or we do have clock cycles, but the input doesn't change, the output doesn't change. So this is a very good storage element. We have stored one bit here. And also, we talked about resets. Uh, let's say a, an asynchronous reset. Whenever here reset is high, high, high active, uh, so the reset is high active. So whenever reset is one, we don't look at the clock because it is asynchronous reset. Then the Q out would become zero. The reset is coming, Q out becomes zero. When we don't have reset, the reset is zero, then we look at the clock and D. When reset is zero, then whatever D is and the clock is coming, Q gets D. Q that gets D. So this is a rising, oh, okay, and this is a rising edge. You look at here, we don't have circle here. So this is a rising edge D flip flop with asynchronous active high reset. Whenever reset is one, it clears the output. And also we talked about timing in the flip flop. Three timing parameters I've introduced for you two important one was uh, setup and hold time. So setup meant that you have to have the data stabled before the edge of the clock. So this is the setup time. And hold time is saying that after the clock you have to hold the data, for example here, this is the hold time. So the, the, the circuit works without problem. If you violate setup time or hold time, then the result might not be as you expected. And there was a clock to queue delay also, because when you have a clock, it doesn't generate the queue momentarily. So it has a delay which is here. This is clock to Q delay, and it has something, for example, three nanoseconds. So the Q becomes D after this amount of time. So there are three parameters, C, clock to Q, and setup time, and hold time. OK, we talked about this before. And then also we talked about counter. Yes. Uh, is there a reason why the flip flop doesn't have steps? Is? It doesn't have steps showing 
no, you could have set or you could have reset. But if you remember, I told you, for every sequential circuit, you need to have some kind of initialization. So this reset or the set is required. So it start from an initial state. And maybe they have both, actually. I, I, I guess this, the, the circuit that I showed you before had both. It's clear and reset, preset, uh, both of them. But here I just put the reset one. The reset would be maybe more common because usually your initial state is zero. Maybe. I'm not saying that it is always true, but since your initial state is usually zero, so it, is, it makes sense to have reset for sure. Maybe a set is also good to have. So counter, we talked about counter. We designed two kind of counters, asynchronous and synchronous. If you remember, for asynchronous counter, we used a T flip flop. And we said that whenever there is a change in Q, then we can use this Q going to the clock of the previous, another stage, so something like that. So we built a T flip I am not going through the detail because we have already discussed about these things. If you have questions, please ask. We have talked about this. So you see here, the Q from here goes to the clock of the, the, uh, the next stage. And then the Q from here goes to the clock of this stage. So if I put a clock here, so the first clock is here. Let's see what happens. So let's uh, start with, uh, well, where are the Qs? OK, let's uh, start with uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, the first state, 0, 0, 0, 0. A clock is coming. Rising edge or falling edge here? Falling. falling edge. It has circle. And it should be falling edge. If it is rising edge, it doesn't work. Because we have Q from 1 to 0 that we would like to make the, the, the toggle. So it should be falling edge. For this asynchronous design, it, is, it should be falling edge. But for the synchronous design, it, should, it could be falling edge or rising. Anyhow. So let me put the timing here, clock. This is the clock. And the initial stage was 0. So at the falling edge of the clock, the Q, this Q, because, because, because OK, we have also enabled. We have, we have connected 1 to enable. Uh, so this is 1 here. This T flip flop has a 1 input and has a falling edge clock. Therefore, Q is toggled. So Q is becoming toggled. At this time, no, it's 0. It is 0, it becomes 1. becomes 1. Q, actually C0 here is, C0 is, means counter 0, the bit 0 of the counter. C0 becomes 1. Okay. Then we go, nothing happens until the next falling edge of the clock. At the next falling edge of the clock, the next falling edge of the clock, again here we have 1 input. Therefore, C0 is toggled. So C0 is toggled. It becomes 0. Now, that C0 becomes 0 from 1 to 0. It is connected to the clock of the C1. And we have a rising, uh, sorry, a falling edge here. Therefore, C1 toggles. Because C1, the input of C1 is 1. And we have a falling edge at the clock. Therefore, C1 toggles. C1 was 0. Here, C1 gets 1. OK. We go to the next falling edge. The next falling edge is still falling edge. The next falling edge. Let's put blue. 
So um, red, uh, the next falling edge C0 targets because it has a one input of one, it has a falling edge here. So C0 targets, but there is no edge in other flip flops. So they are stay the same as it was before. Now let's go to the next falling edge. Next falling edge. So to the next falling edge here, again, S0 toggles. OK, S0 toggles. S0 toggles. Since S0 is coming from 1 to 0, it is a clock for C1. So C1 also toggles here. C1 also toggles here. And since there is a falling edge, C1 is this one, and C1 is connected to clock of C2, and there is a falling edge here, so C2 toggles here. The next falling edge, again, C0, C0 targets. C0 targets here. We have a, fall, a rising edge, so nothing happens. So it's still one, it's still, it is a C0, it's still one. So the next falling edge, the next falling edge here, C0 targets. We have a falling edge here, so C1 toggles. But again, we have falling edge, so C2 is still same. You see that we have build of counter. Look at the counter here. How, it, how it, is this a counter? Let me write it for you with green. So here we have 0, 0, 0. Here we have 1, 0, 0. Here we have zero one zero. Here we have one one zero. Here we have one zero zero. You see, we have built the counter zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one and so on. Yeah. Okay. No questions. Okay. And then we built a synchronous, uh, synchronous counter. You remember, I showed you that the Q0 or the C0 is toggling in every clock cycle. We could say that it toggles in every. So it's easy. This one is easy. But we looked at C1. C1 is toggling is toggling when both C0 and C1 are one. Remember, we talked about this before. Therefore, we built this circuit. So you see here, C1, C1, the first one, okay, coming to T and the C1 ended with this coming to T for the C2. And again, this and with the previous and coming to this. We talked about this before. Okay? This is a sequential circuit. We can have an enable here, an enable here to make it work or not. If I put enable as zero, if I put zero here, then nothing, everything is zero for the for the uh, for t. So if it is for t, then everything is zero, so nothing happens. When enable is one, then t gets one, and then it works. This up to here we talked before. Now I am using this counter to cascade it. You know that it works for cascading. I have this counter, a synchronous counter. If you have questions about this, you could ask me. Yeah.
Yeah, if any questions you could ask, so others also could share. No, it's okay? Yeah, I continue? Okay, look at this counter. It has a clock, it has a CI and CO, and it counts for four bits. If I connect the CO of here to the next stage of CI and cascade, cascade them together, then we have an eight bit counter. Four bit counter, four bit counter, cascaded, and eight bit counter. And also I could have a count, count enable, a global count enable, and it with all of the CIs going to the counters. So if CEN count enable is zero, then nothing work. It doesn't count. But if it is one, and also CI is also one, then it counts. So this is the four bit counter that we have touched. Yes, please. Yeah. Actually, it should connect to this also. With and with and. Yeah, so it is not good. Let me let me correct it. Let me fix it. Very good. Very good observation. So I have to and E N and C I and connect this to that, not this one. Okay? You are right. Very good observation. And if I have a counter enable, a global counter enable, then I can add and it with the input, the first input of every of, of every cascaded cascaded counter. So look at this. What we built? We built something that with each clock cycle it counts from zero to if it is four bit up to fifteen and then again zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fifteen, then zero. Zero, five, five six. But what can we, how can we make it better? The first thing, actually we could have resets for the counter. So if we want to start the counter again from the zero, so it has counted from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now again we want it to start from zero, so we should have a reset. So we make it zero, okay, and it counts from zero. The other thing that it's good to have is to get the outputs because it counts. So we, ha we should have C0, C1, uh, C4 carry. So I don't use C. I use P, parallel uh, output. P out 0, P, uh, P O 1. So this, this is also good. So in every time, if I look at this number, I get zero at the beginning, then one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, it counts. So this is another thing that we should have in our counter, parallel output. The other thing that I would like to have, I talked about it, is a count enable. So if, it, if there is a count enable, if I, disable it, it doesn't count. And also we had count in and count out for cascading them together. So these things that we have done. But the other thing that I would like here to add is input for loading a counter. Let's say I would like to start to, to, to make my counter six from six, starting from six, not from zero. From zero, it is easy, I use reset. But what if I want my counter to start from six? How do I do that? So we make a load mechanism. We put a load signal here. So these are the outputs. We put a load, load signal here. When this signal is active, it loads the input 
the load input pi parallel input 0 parallel input 1 4 bit parallel input to the counter so if I want my counter to become 6 and then counting from 6 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 if I want to do that I put 0 here I put 6 here so 6 6 is 4 plus 2 so this is 6 I put 6 here then I make load active I put a 1 here so it loads there okay loads so from now if I bring it down again so because as long as the old load is 1 it always loads so I would bring it 0 the reset is also should be 0 so the reset is also 0 now it counts if we have enable for count and then clock comes then it counts and it is useful you know why for example um, you want to build a timer I guess you have we had some projects for timer in your projects I don't remember which group was that but you want to build a timer and with timer you need you, you use a clock uh, you use a counter and you put the clock for that counter let's say clock is the frequency of clock is one megahertz one megahertz let me put one kilohertz one megahertz is very fast one kilohertz so the frequency of clock is one kilohertz one kilohertz and you want to detect a time of let's say mm, six milliseconds so you would like to uh, start something uh, your timer and after six millisecond get a signal get a signal that it is six millisecond how do I do that my suggestion that I am going to talk is that uh, six millisecond means six clock cycles because the clock is one kilohertz one kilohertz is each cycle is one millisecond so after six clock cycles is six millisecond so after six cycles I would like to have a signal to give me a, to give me a signal which signal does the counter generates this CO CO when when we I, this is counting from 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 the next clock cycle CO becomes 1 and the counter becomes 0 okay so CO is a very good signal that it uh, it becomes active at the end of the clock at the end of the count cycle which is 15 here and when we go to 16 so if I want to get a signal after six clock cycle I start from which number 10 because if I start from 10 the next clock cycle becomes 11 12 13 14 15 the next clock cycle generates CO so I load my counter with 10 then I, I the clock comes after six millisecond CO becomes one and it's very good for example you wanted to uh, let's say uh, measure the speed of a car you put two, two things in the road and from here uh, no not this one it's, it's, it, it needs more circuits something that you would like to have a six millisecond there what do you do the, the a door has opened but nobody for example uh, ATM give you your money and it has a timer after a while it, it gets back the money if you didn't take it so we need a timer there so you could use something like this counter to make a time a time period good so the parallel input is also important so we have a counter which has parallel input which has reset which has counter and a count enable 
and uh, Plotara input works with load and also has parallel output that I could use it always. So how do I make this? What is the, res the answer? David, multiplexer, the multiplexer uh, expert. Multiplexer, so I will use multiplexer. So if load is issued, then parallel input is passed to the parallel output and the counter gets that value and counts from that value. If count, it means count enable, and CI, which is the count in, both they are issued, they are one, both of them, then the counter starts to count up from uh, PI value, the loaded value, up to 15, and then again becomes zero. So what did we build? We built a binary counter, modulo 16, because it goes up to, it, it, it counts 16 values and then again becomes zero, modulo 16, up counter with active high parallel load and count enable and also active high reset. So this is the counter that we have built. How do we do that? Multiplexer. So again, we, we use now I am using D flip-flops instead of T flip-flops. It, it gives me more flexibility. You see why? Because if I have D flip-flops, then I could have parallel loads. I could have resets. And so it is, it's, it's better. So how do I count? I put D flip-flop, not T flip-flop. How do I count? I use an incrementer. You have seen the incrementer circuit before, half adders. Do you remember? With half adders, I built an incrementer. So I have incrementer, and the output of this incrementer goes for the flip-flop, the input of the flip-flop. And with a coming clock, they appear at the output. And this output is fed back to the incrementer, so the next clock cycle, it increments again. So it increments every clock cycle, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 15, and then again 0, because it is 4 bit. But what about parallel load? What about reset? So we will use multiplexers here. So if I have this multiplexer, if I have the load signal coming, then my flip-flop gets the value from parallel input. If the load is zero, then the flip-flop gets the value from half adder, from the incrementer, you see? So the value of incrementer is stored in the flip-flop when there is no load. If there is load signal, then the value of parallel input goes to the D flip-flop. So a very good design. Up, counter, with parallel load, with reset, with count enable, and everything. OK, so let's do the attendance, and then we continue the next things. So please go to the site. And uh, attendance, I should be there. Attendance should be in module sequential components. Yes, attendance July 11. The password is uh, zero, uh, 230711. 230711. Hello, Professor. Hi, how are you? <laughs> okay, have a good day. So, see you on Friday.